All right. So I'm going to be starting now, uh, even though we don't have everybody, that's fine. I hope that we more, more come in. So uh, this first uh, session, you can do it with four players. Uh, but if you, you have only two players to do it with, or your mom or dad, you can do the challenge on your own. So each person is going to be doing something else to feed each other. Uh, with the pass and they need to be working on uh, different parts of their body first touch and control uh, so uh, you, you see the drill now I'm gonna put up the volume a little bit up uh, we are starting now I hope that we got more people coming in some people just checks in and just show their names and and leave they don't think we can see that but we can I hope that more coming in these are very valuable sessions guys all right, I'm going to start now. Uh, let me know if you can have a hard time hearing it or not. Guys, uh, this is an easy exercise, the four cones. Each cone has to do something different. Uh, so just a simple workout. Uh, power from the dog, he's going to lift it up, pass it on air. He has to head it, not down, but up. He has to chest it and pass it back. Let's see it. One, One more time. The four cones. This so uh, if you can't hear that, I'll repeat it here. Uh, this player passes a pass one touch on the ground. This player lifts the ball up one time and then pass the ball to the other player. Third player has to head it up. And the fourth player needs to chest it and pass it back to the original player. And they do this for a while. When they perfect their movement and their touch, they rotate and they do the different thing. This is really good exercise for working on different touches and different placements. Easy exercise, the four cones. Each cone has to do something different. Uh, so just a simple workout. Uh, Listen to it one more time. He's gonna lift it up, pass it on air. He has to head it, not down, but up. He has to chest it and pass it back. Let's see it. One, one. Head it, chest, and volley. One touch here. And head it. You need to get close. Stop. Good. Up, good, hit it, chest, only one touch. That's one touch. Better touch Better from touch. TJ there, need it. That's it. Nice. Hit it up, good. chest, good. good. And up, good. Oh boy, I'm back. That's fine. <laughs> Try to do a different job. Alright. Let's see. Hit up, good, chest, fast. Uh, Rafa, try to aim to the target, try to keep it in front of, uh, it's hard then. So, this is the first example with that. Uh, I'm going to give you another example right here with this one. Uh, we, they rotate it now, they have different jobs now. Nice. Beautiful, well done. Nice. Good job. All right, let's stop. Good job. Better pass. All right. <laughs> so, if you can see, guys, this is very simple drill. Uh, you guys are working on different touches. Even though this looks easy, after a while, it gets pretty hard. And some of you guys don't have the touches yet. So, this is a good session for you. So, how can you do it with your mom or your dad, right? So what you can do, let's just say uh, these two players are working together. Uh, Rio passed the ball on the ground. This guy lifts it up and passes back. And uh, then the parent puts it down. Uh, I mean, uh, holds the ball. And next one, of course, what's supposed to be his header, right? You throw it on, on air. You head the ball. And the next one you can do chest and, and volley. But... If you have more than one, you guys can actually rotate differently, but ideally four players are perfect for this. Uh, let's see again, like I said, on the ground, up, head, chest, one ground, up, head, chest, pass, pass again. Beautiful and every pass needs to be good enough to be able to feed the other one So you really need to be focusing on finding the target every single time So it's a very simple drill 
uh, simple movement to do. I kind of want to now uh, go to the coaches and and see what they think about this. If you guys can uh, unmute yourselves. Pass again. You, you might want to mute me there. You do not have to be able to do You really need to be focusing on finding the time and the angles of the time. I found it funny how you said this is simple. <laughs> oh, is that right? Uh, you might want to uh, mute me in the computer so we, we don't have to double. It's a mute. Oh, yeah, this is tough. We're about, we're about 30 seconds behind here on the screen. Oh, yeah, the screen, for sure. So. That's what I'm saying. All right, uh, Jeff, what do you think about that? Uh, I'll add what Joe said. Yeah, it's, it's a simple drill in terms of setup, um, but it definitely is very hard to get those touches accurate and get them back to the player. So parents, if you're trying to play with your uh, son or daughter playing, um, don't worry about your touches back as a pass, but like use your hand. You can toss that ball up for those headers, those chest traps for them. Um, that's, that's super, super helpful for them as a player just to get those touches uh, be more accurate. Uh, Dodgy, I remember doing this last year with the Steelheads one training session on a Thursday night when we did it at uh, Martha Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was out there playing hard with those guys and uh, that was, it was it was a lot of work. We had about five guys, right? I think we had a group of five and that ball could not touch the ground. It had to stay off the ground. Yep. Um, that's ideally what we want, right? We want accurate touches, chest, head uh, volleys to our players feet so it's a really good drill for your skill don't get frustrated keep with it with more practice it's going to get better yeah Hector what did you think because you did you did it yourself yeah I did I did the exercise and uh, I think it was uh, I, you just have to get the hang of it and even you know as a semi-pro player you would I would have to say that some touches are challenging and you can't always get a perfect touch on it. But I mean, try to, and I, I know repetition goes a long way. And, yeah. um, and it, it really, you know, get better as you go. Um, uh, one thing I know that, you know, uh, it's, you're going to fail and fail again until you're able to do it. So that's, that's the main point. Just keep, doing what you're doing and yeah. try. Uh, Joe, what you were saying, it's hard, so why? Because uh, it's not just about body control, it's about mind control yeah. uh, and understanding the drill, whether it's you finishing the touch or uh, executing the pass or whatever it is, you're constantly moving, constantly thinking, constantly trying to uh, get better at your next touch and what's going on. And like you said, not every touch is perfect. So you need to be able to adjust. Okay. If a pass doesn't come in perfectly where you want to, you still need to try and make that, that adjustment to make the pass as accurate as you can. So, I mean, it, it looked easier by semi pros because they work hard at it. Don't, take for granted that what they're doing is easy by any means, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just like when we watch you, you do stuff, uh, it, it looks a little bit different than when uh, us as players and pros uh, get about it. So work hard at it. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, mute yourself again, guys. I'm going to ask you a couple questions later. All right. Uh, one thing I wanted to make sure that you guys understand, I, I think the coaches uh, touched some good subjects. So uh, this header thing, uh, when we first started, by the way, uh, there has been a lot of bad accidents with this uh, session. Uh, a lot of players in the, the they can do the first part good. They lift it up and pass, but the headers were just regular headers. If you want to keep the ball on air and you know set somebody up or put it over somebody, you need to make sure your chin is up. So I can see that that see that chest uh, the head is up there. Uh, let's go to the beginning right here. Uh, let's do uh, thanks to Gilberto again. We find out about the slow motion thing. Uh, up it. Uh, he, he didn't need to do that second touch. So ch look at that. Chin up. Chest get under it. Perfect touch to the ground. Bomb. Good tech. And lift it up. And chin up. You see that? Chest get under it. 
and beautiful yeah. movement. So that's a good, easy session. Uh, you guys can easily do it yourself, uh, even with different numbers. Uh, this next one is very, very important for center mitts even center backs and in sometimes when you get in a situation as a forward find yourself in the center and you need to be in a distribution position so we are going to be working on three different moves that are very useful so one move is one of the best center mitts and forward attacking mitts in the world Georgi Haji he uses this to protect the ball and a lot of players around the world uh, to Patrick Vieira uh, Pirlo they use this move too. They use one part of the body to cover the ball and the other uh, uh, part is pulling the ball with them. And second one is Zinedine Zidane move. We, we did some exercises for Zinedine Zidane move. Now, we're going to see it uh, where we can be using that. And then, of course, third one, what we've been working on, uh, the, the cut back. So, uh, the Iniesta. So... I'm gonna show you guys something real quick before we start this part of it. Uh, so uh, let's just say uh, we are starting an attack. Uh, we are in the red team and uh, the pressure is coming. And, and let's just say they're all spread out and they're covering players up here. Uh, there's a player up here. Uh, they are just making sure that we don't have an option there, right? And you're a center mid. So uh, one of them, of course, uh, you, can, you can try to go through by covering the Haji one. You, you put your body in between the player and the ball and pull the ball with one foot. And second one is you want to change the direction. Uh, you look that way, you dribble it that way so that the more defenders are defending that side and you pull the ball in a V position and beat the player with the Zidane move and now you have an open space to see maybe the through ball right here, right? and or the, open the game to the wide position right there, right? So, and uh, Iniesta is the same thing, you take the attention one way, you act like you're gonna go that way, put your body in between the player and the ball, this is why these moves are very important for anybody to learn because they're very low risk to lose the ball. A lot of players in Washington, they play a lot of indoor and they wanna do nutmegs and close, up, close by moves, uh, but these moves that we're gonna just show is a very high ranked. Uh, you can make these moves work against the top level professionals. So I want you guys to pay attention to this uh, video very carefully. Okay? All right. Good. So we're gonna be working on the center mid movement. You know, center mid moves. Uh, we're gonna be specifically working on those. Always two. You know, one of the things that we've been working on, right? So. Just to let you guys know, there is two players, there's three cones in here. Uh, one of them is closer to the player, actually four cones. One with the center mid. One, the center mid pressure, this could be a center back or center mid on the other team. And these outside players are your teammates. So there's four cones, uh, two on the outside, one in the center. Uh, you receive the ball from one side and you touch it to the opposite foot to open the game. And then you do your move. But you're working on movement as a center mid and moves as a center mid. You're going to touch the top of the stack. But what do we do now? Okay. So we open the game here, okay, and you're going to be coming at me, of course. So we're going to be working on a couple of the uh, center mid moves. So one uh, move we're going to be working on is covering, right? Uh, you've got, when the player coming, if you put your body and touch the ball to open space. And touch do you see that? That's the Haji one. Guys, even though that looks so simple, I don't know if you realize it, how many times, as a player, I use that a lot, uh, and obviously, I'm an injured guy, but I use it a lot, but I've seen so many of the top level players do this simple move. Because it protects the ball, you step towards the guy's knees and your arm and le your leg covers the ball. It's a simple move, it's a dribbling technique. You make sure that when you touch the ball, open the step with the player, all right, let's go a little bit here. I want you guys to see it in slow motion real quick, and we can go back to normal. Uh, watch this. Step arm, and automatically when you step, your foot is on the ball, so it's going to be pulling the ball anyway. All right, 
So uh, you'll see more examples in a bit. But the idea is, you, I, I don't know if you guys saw how open my leg was. See, one foot is on the player, one foot is on the ball. And look at how far from, uh, like my left foot is the protecting foot, how far it is from the player. Look at that, right there. Arm and leg. You see that? How far? This is what makes this move. One of the undefendable moves, doesn't matter who you face, if you do it right. And, ball, and you bring the ball with you. You make sure that when you touch the ball, the opposite side, when he's coming, I put my arm and leg. I see that again. He used to do that a lot. Uh, they call him the Maradona or the Euro. Uh, when he comes, step and pull the ball with you. Uh, uh, the now, the, how it works is. You touch the ball, the player is coming, you step towards the player and bring the ball with you. Look at how far from the player and the ball you're pulling the ball. It's a very good technique for center miss to control and also defend the player. Another thing you can do with this, of course, you, need to, you can put Iniesta to it, right? So he passed the ball to me, I touched it this way. You're coming, I step that way and touch the other side and pass the ball to you. Did you hear what I said there though? You can do the first part like Haji does, but you see there's nowhere to go there because there's a second defender. So you add Iniesta. You use that as a fake to go that way and touch to the opposite side. But the first fake is critical. When you step that hard enough, uh, right there, let's see it. You're coming. I step hard enough, it's going to make it look like I'm going to go that way. It opens up space, I can pass the ball. Ball comes, I touch it, when he's coming, I step, touch it. I just pulled his toenail there, but that's okay. Hector is a tough guy. Do you guys understand uh, the movement up there? This is very important. And the third one, we, uh, the video cut. Uh, so I'll show you guys uh, the second one right here. The third one is the Zidane. One, we touch it this way, right? We open the side, touch it this way. He's coming. The Zidane, right? Zidane. And you see there's two cones in between to pass the ball to outside. I need to be very accurate. This is about three yards or actually two yards. Maybe even shorter, small area, uh, two yards, looks like it's may, maybe a yard actually. Look at that, yard, both sides. So you have to be very accurate with your pass between between and pass to the other side. But Zidane move, a lot of players do this wrong. They pull it to the side in front of the player and I pull it behind me. So what do we do? Go ahead. So let's just say, pass coming from that way first. I'm going to touch the ball this way. When the player is coming, that was a, should be a better touch. Um, the player, you don't give me seven, right? Okay. But then I pass the ball behind you. All right. So I pull it away. Pass the ball Even to that's the too short. Pass. It's when too short. That, though, I'm, but I'm judging I'm myself right that, now. You look at where you're not, not gonna go. I'm like, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna do it. You're off. That's I'll better. It has to be moving ball. behind, but yeah, it's not perfect, but it's better. Here. Three moments. One, cover, pull, pass the ball. Two, cover, pull, Iniesta. Make sure you step hard though when you're going to do Iniesta. And we're going to start with the last one. Uh, this is done, and then we're going to add more. And then we're going to rotate. Rio does it four times. One this side, one that side, one this side, one that side. We rotate. And I think we should do six after I decided. So, uh, we had some issues with this guys, uh, they didn't really understand Zidane, a lot of players make mistakes with Zidane, but we'll see the action first. Um, uh, this is how the drill is going to go. Nice. Touch. Good. Nice. Covered it. Touch. Good. See, that's Long too short. Like, pull back. Yeah. He's coming. Nice. Nice. Good. Good. Very good. Go ahead. Touch. Good. Isn't going fast. Let's do six times. Couple more. Two. Nice. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hector is not defending really well right now to give us a good example, but that's a good one. All right. So they had a hard time with the Zidane, obviously you can see that. So I had to explain Zidane one more time. A lot of players do it like that. They pull it and it works sometimes, guys. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It just, if you guys going to play against a top level uh, player, this is not going to work. Like if you put it that close to a player, it's not going to work. If this guy is coming 100%, he's gonna lose it. Right? But if the ball is here, it's coming. If I put right away. Oh, see, now I want you guys to watch this part in slow motion and how far away from the player I'm pulling it away. So, this is a key thing for you guys to see. Away. And look at where the ball was. Do you see that again? Watch this. So the ball is here and I end up around here somewhere. So that's a big reach for if the player reaches, this is as far as he's going to be able to reach, right? Right where my feet are. Uh, with any of the feet, this is where it's going to be reaching. So if I go further than that, around here or around here, I'm going to be clear to go to the next place. Grabbed it. Look at how far. And that's a good one. Okay. Uh, let's go back to normal speed. And see what the coach says. Okay, okay behind me. Where am I? Shoulder is turning. Shoulders are opening out. Maybe pulling it. It's like you're gonna put it behind you. You see that? It's almost like putting it behind you. But the moment I'm pulling it, I'm opening my shoulders. Like that. You're gonna open your shoulders. Hey guys, turn off that. My voice in the background, please. One of the coaches uh, turned on there. <laughs> All right. One of the most, I'm telling you, it, you will see a lot of the top level center mix do this. This is a very useful keeping the ball away from. All right. Let's see some more examples of that. Uh, TJ Gala uh, center mid. You know. Touch the opposite side. Nice. Hey. This is absolutely outstanding, TJ. Like, uh, this is the absolutely the one of the best Haji moves. This is one of the, like I said, not a flashy move, but absolutely great. Why? Watch. The player is coming. He put his arm and leg on nice. the way of the player. Hey. Yeah, that's slow motion. Hey. Sounds amazing. All right. Let's see, continue. TJ, that's the one, man. Go. Touch it away. Touch. Nice. Nice, not you bad. For that weight. Good pass, that, too. That weight is allowing the center back to come back. I like this point right here uh, the coach makes. I guess that's me. So, the what happens in here, uh, even though I, I said right now it was good, but he's right. The coach said, you know, you're taking too long to pass the ball, and that could be a problem. Why? Because the center mid. Uh, that is defending you can come back and block that also if you take too long looking at Rio Rio could get somebody on him by the time you pass so you got to make sure once you open the game if the player is open pass the ball quick nice so he's pass waiting pass. he's waiting you that that weight is allowing the center back to come back so you did a good fake you touched on the side pass it right away go ahead Nice and pass. Pass. Much better. Look at it. Not great, right? But he gets the idea. Now I want you to see this. This is I want you guys to kind of when we're doing this, I want you to look at Hector. Now, I I personally think Hector Hector is gonna be in one year, uh, maybe next year even. He's going to be one of the most improved players uh, in this area. He already has the athletic ability to be a top level player, but he didn't have the decision making and he didn't have the touches necessarily to go to that level. But like this is the attitude why 
Hector is going to the next level. I want you guys to watch Hector's uh, attitude. Uh, now watch what he's doing. Technical difficulties. I blame the cameraman again. Watch the watch Hector again. Uh, technical difficulties. I blame the cameraman again. So that's exactly what a player should be like, right? Hold on. All right. So let's continue the drill. That's better. Touch it. Nice. That was such a good fake. Well done, to it. Touch it. You are. You gotta jump back. Okay. The moment you pull. Try it again. So he's coming, right? Jump back. Better, but it's. You to beat touch. the guy jump back. Don't pull him back. It's a move. You have it's a move. You have, have to beat the guy first. Jump. God is getting frustrated. He's getting mad. Pull it. Touch, touch it. Oh my goodness. I'm getting mad now. Beat the player, then pass. Look, I'm arguing with myself now. That's great. Pull it back. Touch it. And then pass. Beautiful. Look at that. Switch all of them. Try all of them. But look at that. That whole drill from the beginning. Look at that cover. That was incredible, man. TJ, that's the one, man. Go. Touch. Nice! And pass quickly to that weight. You, that, that weight is allowing the center back to come back. So you did a good fake, you touched on the side, pass it right away. Go ahead. Nice! And pass. Beautiful. Much better. Like that. Uh, technical difficulties. I blame the cameraman again. That's oh. Beautiful, that. That was such a good face. Well done, for good. You are. All right. Let's go to the next example. Rio alone, because he uh, in here is funny. Uh, I did it first, but then he pretty much broke uh, Hector's leg, <laughs> Hector's foot. He stepped on it really hard, so Hector is taking a little break right here. Well, Rio is working on the movement without a pressure. That's better. Hector, you're going to be okay? Yeah, that was fine. I just heard something pop. I was just hoping it was in my nails, so it's good. <laughs> okay. It's probably a broken toe. You're fine. Yeah. Okay. Really tough. All right, rotate. All right, let's see. He just worked on that some stuff. I just want you guys to see it as a Steelers player, and we do it one more time right here. Watch this. He touch it. Nice. And, ah! Do you see? Remember that when Rio first did that, when we showed it to you guys, Rio's pull were so close in front of Hector. Hector could have easily touched it. He already improved after working on it for a while. Watch this. Touch. He's coming, he pulls it away, what a move. All right, so this part is, we changed it a little bit. And the second part of this drill is not only we do the center moves, but we do a give and go to finish it. So you open the game one way to another, but now you pass the give and go situation, and then you rotate right away. You beat the player, you pass, and you give and go. That's it, look at that. Oh my Oy. God. TJ, technical difficulties. Oh, that's the moves that we didn't show you guys. There's some cool moves. Uh, I don't know, I didn't get the videos for those, so uh, I blame my directors on that one. Alright, that's good. And give and go. It's a nice movement, the same movement, except now you're rotating every time. And giving go situation, you touch it this way so you can do the next pass right away. Touch it this way. Nice. And give and go. All right. All right, now I'm going to allow the coaches to come in now to make some comments about it. And I would like you guys 
to uh, make some comments as well if you have any questions. Uh, all right, guys, coaches, what do you think? Jeff, what do you think? Sorry, a little bit behind. Uh, yeah, so I was noticing actually that first touch away, right? Uh, I think you could actually make that pass a lot faster, right? So first touch, as soon as it's pulled away, you could almost make that pass uh, much quicker. If you take one touch, you've already drawn the attention to your open player to the opposite side. And like you said, uh, another defender is going to close on him really fast. So uh, as we as we get higher level, we need to make that movement much faster. Uh, this this the drill though. If you guys can, if you watch enough soccer, you will be able to see the importance of this drill more and more. Like at any center mid movement, and these these touches are like like daily movement the drills. For Barcelona, for Ajax youth program, for Gota Sarai youth program that I was a part of, and I played in Germany for a bit, and I, uh, it's important, guys. It's critical. So um, I think it's going to make the players more consistent about opening the game and more consistent about keeping the ball in their feet. I agree with Jeff. Like We just need to make sure that we move it a little bit faster, but get used to the movement first. Like, get used to this movement first. Because a lot of you guys are trying to not make the player and you lose the ball in a counterattack and you're gone. Like, you're not playing in indoor soccer right now. You're in a big field. You lose the ball, gives the player 60 yards behind you in a center mid. So you can't risk these in the center mid. So you want to make sure you're being smart about what you do. Um, uh, what do you think? It Joe? creates space. Oh, yeah. It creates space. Oh, yeah. It. For sure. What do you think, Joe? Uh, I got one word, uh, sell. Oh, yeah. You have to sell your moves. You have to sell what you're, what you think that they're thinking. <clears throat> um, especially as an outside mid, uh, you know, it's quickness, uh, getting up and down the field. Uh, during this drill, uh, a lot of these guys got, they, they got the understanding of what they were supposed to do, but it was selling what they were not doing what which is what was lacking uh so like dodgy goes the, the emphasis on details is sell the fake you know uh, you play, play your poker your poker cards one hand you're doing this you're doing the other thing on the other side so uh as long as you're selling it and understanding where you're going before you even know what's going on uh, or before they know what's going on things are going to work out well yeah, I agree. What, what do you think, Hector? Really quick, though, because i got to answer something real quick. All right, that's cool. Uh, I just think that, you know, those most moves I didn't know before, and I think just uh, by by you knowing them and explaining on how you can create that space, uh, and you can see yourself doing those in the field and being able to see how they work. Like, always have a butt between the ball and the other player. And just the fakes uh, are what really set it. Like, let's say you take, you're going to kick the ball one way and you're going the other way. Uh, it just really catches the other player off guard. At least second or two, but well, second or two is more than enough for you to be gone or open space and give a pass ball. You're kind of cutting out, so I'm going to stop you in there. Because uh, I don't think we can hear you. All right. So uh, one thing that came from uh, one player up there is Square uh, Ajit. I don't know what you see Square in this whole drill <laughs> because uh, I can't uh, at all. There is nothing Square about this whole thing. Uh, this whole thing is you creating space to move the ball forward, and giving go is not a Square ball. You get the ball from behind and you beat the player and you just go giving go. Like, uh, I mean, if you if you get into detail, the last touch, yes, it can look like a square ball, but square balls are a lot different than what you understand. I think, Ajit, uh, it's you need to like this is complete the center mid movement and and you just need to visualize the center mid is beating the player to move the ball forward because he wants to attack. So when you consider square ball, now we are talk, 
thinking about is, is the center mid have another player beside him and he didn't that's yeah, not what he's doing like he's not considering that so I just want you to understand that so unless we, we're not gonna confuse anybody about this this is not like a center mid working with another center mid this is center mid opening the game and moving the ball forward it's very important you understand that so one thing that is also important guys for all of you to understand is how critically amazing these three moves are to keep the ball away from player and if you do this right you're gonna be losing the ball a lot less so when you go to a professional tryout uh, one of the things they want to see is the consistency of a player so you could do an amazing nutmeg and put the ball over the guy with the rainbow great how many times can you do that versus you do this every single time you're gonna keep the ball in your team you want to be able to be consistent and that's what they look for they don't care if you're incredible at you do you understand how many players in Africa in the street and how many players in Brazil, Argentina in the street or in the beach is better than most professional players when it comes to moves? That does not make them professional soccer players. Why? Because they're not consistent. They're not gonna be able to do that every single time. They're not gonna be able to do that against a six foot four solid defender who if you beat him like that, they're gonna knock you to your butt. So you got to make sure that you uh, are consistent about your movement and this is going to protect the ball so if Hector is defending me and I do one of these moves I'm going to put my body in between Hector and me so if Hector comes in hard I pull a foul but if I'm doing the move in front of Hector Hector comes in he, he takes the ball and maybe piece of me too but I don't get a foul because he gets the ball so what this move allows is you put your body in between the player and the ball each time so that's gonna be making you winner right away doesn't matter how good you are or better than that guy you are gonna be winning if you do this right you understand so it's I think that's a huge point I hope that people listen to this I think this session is critical like critical insanely critical all right thanks for the input guys uh, let's see the other ones now we're gonna be moving on uh let's see so this is an outside mid movement so any of the outside mids i'm going to show you guys three moves uh and players uh like ajit and some of the other defenders if you find yourself on the outside you guys can use these moves because a lot of times center backs uh when they get the ball they find themselves outside when they're moving forward right it's hard for a center mid to dribble towards the center uh, unless they give you a lot of space that happens too but most of the time if you get the ball wide you can dribble on the outside without causing an immediate danger so these moves uh, could use, uh, be useful for you as well uh, if the player is coming from the side and most of the time when you get the ball touch it wide uh, you know the player is coming from the side of you so these moves are critical Okay, a lot of the top level players used to do this. Uh, some of these moves are from Kanchaskis from Manchester United. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo does this. Uh, Gareth Bale does this. Uh, so just pay attention. Okay, Ava, can you stop uh, sending weird things? It's distracting. All right, thank you, hon. All right. Mid, you know, All right, just uh, watch. So it's an outside mid, you know. Uh, the Before uh, I start, there's a yellow cone here where the player is going to dribble the ball all the way to yellow. And there's a cone right here, a little bit behind the yellow. The moment player dribbling comes to yellow, the defender is going to be on. He's going to be running at the player. Okay, if you can hear that. And then there is a player up there waiting for the cross as a forward, and there is a player as a goalkeeper. And you guys can always rotate. So. What we do with this, they rotate each time, one of them becomes defender, one of them becomes the crosser. And goalie and defense, I mean goalie and forward rotates every time, so they get a lot of action as well. And the defender, once he gets the yellow, he is released to defend him. And we work on three moves. One, after you're going to hit it, go over the wall, let me get a ball So he's coming, right? I act like I'm going to heal it, touch it inside. It's a really useful move when you're running 
So if you go over the ball straight, it makes it look like you might stop the ball or you might heal the ball. That causes the defender a one second of hesitation and they stop. In that hesitation, you're gone. And you just need to use that speed at that and then cross the ball. I act like I'm gonna heal it, touch it inside. No, I want you guys to watch this. Uh, slow motion right here. So I'm going straight in the center of my foot over the ball. I'm going this far in front of the ball so it makes it look like I might be healing that ball. And then I'm going to come back to it and touch it inside of my foot. Okay? Watch. Slow motion. I act like I'm going to heal it, touch it. Okay, that sounds like a drunk dodgy, which I'd never get drunk. Alright. So, uh, one more time, let's volume. Right around here, okay. So he's coming to me, watch. I go act like I'm gonna go over. I look at what I'm doing with my face right there. I act, look, I'm acting like I might heal it and go backwards and my body's facing this way like I just healed it, right? This is a smart player because I'm doing the whole body fake. I'm going, acting like I'm going to go that way, come back and bomb this way. And now I have a cross. All right. So let's see with the normal speed again. Uh, I act like I'm going to heal it, touch it inside and cross the ball. Second move. We're gonna act like we're gonna cut it. He's coming, right? We're gonna act like we're gonna cut it and touch it the other way, right away. Double touch. A soft touch, guys, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna slow motion that oh, too. Oh. Second move. We're gonna act like we're gonna cut it. He's. I'm gonna slow motion that one too, right here. Uh, watch this. It's a very soft touch with your toes, with your right. Barely touch it this way. Barely though. So if that player sees that ball moving that way, he's gonna stop for a second. And then right away, keep your toe up on the left, left foot and cut it long enough to beat the player and run to have a good cross. It's coming, right? We gonna... Touch and look at that. So again, you act, look at the body language when it's turning. I, I look at my face, where am I looking? When I cut the ball, my body is facing like I'm gonna cut it this way, and then right away, go to the other side. Look again, he is coming, I'm visualizing where he is, touch, touch, and you're going to open space, okay? Let's go back to the normal speed. And the third one is the stop go. These are good outside mid moves. He's coming. Attack. Attack. This is a harder one to do. And we go. You pull Attack. it towards you like you're going to stop the ball, just like the same idea. If you realize outside mid moves is all about we're running with full speed with the ball, and all three of them is about slowing down the player, make them hesitate, and not make him come full speed, right? So that one second hesitation each time is gonna give you guys space to cross the ball. Does that make sense? He's coming. I pull. I track. I go. I cross. And we go. They're gonna be rotating every time. These two are gonna be rotating. One forward, one going. And then we rotate these guys to here. Does that make sense? And uh, let's see the examples right here. Nice. Nice. Good. Let's finish, okay, Rafa. Alright, step. See, this is what I get mad at TJ up here. He knows that. I already warned him after. It's too slow. It's not realistic. You, nobody dribbles on the outside with like short, little, cute touches. You need to be fast on the outside. But move is good. Cross is good. Now they rotate. They go again. Nice double touch by Rio. 
and almost, Rafa. Not bad. He doesn't know where he's crossing. It's a great cross, but he's not really looking. Look. Exactly, coach said it. Now, watch him. He's not, not even one second he looks up to where the player is. He's just like looking at the ball. Great cross, but the player is right here. Rio's running. That was not a great move, but good pass. He always sees the player at least. All right. Let's see the last example for this one. Not bad. He looked up this time. Not bad at all, TJ. You see that last second he looked up before he crossed. Good move. He looked up. He sees the player. He goes. Could be a better finish, but it's still a good finish. Over down. See, the coach is yelling. I said over the down, not bottom to up when you're finishing. Not great. All right, so let's go back to the coaches real quick. Uh, I'm going to talk to Jeff first. Again, uh, Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I think these are all good moves to be practicing. It's very tough to do in slow motion. Obviously, like you were kind of touching on TJ, try to do it at game speed as best you can. Yes, you're going to fail, but the more you do it, the better your touch is going to get. So push yourself at game speed whenever you can when you're doing these touches. Yeah, and they got better. Do them slow way. at start. Do them slow to start, but then once you get a couple, really push yourself to go as fast as you possibly can because that's what's going to be in the game. I agree. I agree. Uh, Joel, what do you think? I, we can't hear you. The sound is not there. Uh, just uh, like Jeff said, real speed. You have to practice how you're going to play. Yep. If you can't practice at 50% and expect to play at 100%, that's n it's not realistic. Uh, so make sure that your moves during, it doesn't matter if it's a two-foot drill or a 30-yard drill, do it 100% because the only way that you're going to do it 100% on a field is by practicing that and, way. And Joe so is saying easy that. enough. After you get it down, guys, like you know, you can you can start like Jeff said, slow to get yep. the move down. But once you get it down, you better be doing it full force because you're not gonna be able to get away with it in slow motion in the game. Yeah, you're not you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not exactly. helping yourself uh, progress in your skill set. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Hector, what do you what do you think? Uh, I would say that. Uh, definitely, you know, the moves that you showed. It, at first, it was kind of hard to get, you know, to used to it. And I was just, uh, me, myself, I had to, you know, start slow and make mistakes. Obviously, you're going to make mistakes. And I I think that what they say, I agree with them, it's full speed. Because, you know, if you do it slow, it's predictable. They can see what's it's coming. And that's... I would really recommend that, you know, even though if you fell and fell over again, uh, to do it full speed. Yeah. Uh, I, got, I got one thing there. Uh, I don't think we showed in those videos. There was a couple points where our defensive players did not go full speed, uh, which affected our offensive players. Mm -hmm. So when everybody went at full speed, the, the delivery was better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we... So, yeah. Uh, that was the videos that my director did not send me though, so I mean, I I, I, I will have to, I will have to. Uh, 
Dang it. <laughs> uh, so, but but no, I agree with you. I I think that um, you know when you increase the intensity, but like at the beginning, I'm okay with them doing a slow motion. But once they get to the reality of things, uh, you know, you need to make it full speed. Now, but what one thing is really important, guys, is these moves are useful for the, their positions. Uh, but it's really important if you guys take pay attention to these. Some of you guys are never gonna try it, and the ones that tried it, like uh, Jalen Chrysler, we interviewed a couple weeks ago. These are their, his moves, man. He loves this stuff. Like this guy, and some of you guys are never gonna try these. You're gonna be like, I have my move. I not make people with my great move. Eh, whatever you do, but these are moves that I learned. I'm not teaching because I, you know, pulled them, uh, you know, out of sky. I actually learned this stuff and I learned this stuff from the top level people that it requires professional players to do this stuff. So when you get these down like Jalen does, now he's playing and he knows those moves and he can do them and he's playing center back for a professional team and getting paid to do so. So and, and there's a lot of players, Matt Renica, I trained the, the same thing, I, I sent another Matthew to Europe, he's playing in second division right now. And they are using these moves, and they know these moves, and they can they can do it. Laura Hernandez played in the World Cup; they, she can do these moves. But you gotta try them. So that's why you guys take these like uh, sessions and slow motion it. You got the chance now. You know how to slow motion. You saw how I did it. Go to YouTube. We have all the videos, and 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 try them. I'm gonna tell you this. Uh, when you go to like YouTube, like I know a lot of you guys, like you know, uh, Ajit was talking about. Uh, I'm gonna always bring this because he made me really mad. He's not doing any of our work, and he's telling everybody in the, our chat, "Oh, go, uh, Winston Company has this app. Go do that. Do your work. What we are working on, and then get in my better side, and I won't be talking about Winston Company's stupid app anymore, and I don't bring your name anymore." Because you need to do the work what we're doing right now because these are good stuff. This is the reason that my players who had a dream to go to the next level went to the next level versus these guys are watching like futsal videos and, and YouTube and like they work on these like I'm telling you guys that like, guys who does videos in YouTube they don't play professional soccer for a reason. Incredible moves, they step on the ball, move it over the guy, they do some street shows. Why are they not playing soccer in professional league if they're that good? Because they prefer YouTube followers? No, they can't play. Because those moves in a full speed against a six foot four defender is not going to work every time. So work on what I'm teaching you. Moves that will work against top level defenders at any level so that's the keyword okay so we want to make sure that you guys understand yes there is a lot of tricky stuff in the internet you can youtube and i know like a lot of parents unfortunately players and parents they hear these big names and they get excited about it like oh my god Crimson company dude this guy's still a player He's, he hasn't coach <laughs> like what's his background in coaching I mean, uh, not every player is going to make an amazing coach, right? And there every, uh, some, some of the best coaches in the world, like Arsene Wenger, a legendary Arsenal coach, he never played soccer. Jose Mourinho never played soccer. I mean, these are the best coaches in the world. You, you being a player doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be an outstanding coach, okay? So, and then don't fall for the names. So the, the moves I'm teaching right now is working moves. So work them, try them, put it in action. And I'm telling you, you're going to see the difference, but stick to them. Okay. So any, any, repetition, any repetition. comment about it? Yeah, repetition. Any comment about what I said? Uh, you know, I, I know you guys have kids and so cousins and I know Hector once watching YouTube videos and trying to do those moves. How many of them uh, like street soccer moves can you really do in a game situation versus these moves? How many of them can match with the moves that we just worked on? Let's just be honest. I don't think, I don't think any, and I think it's key to do these moves is to work under pressure. I think most kids do, well, me, myself, I think uh, I do better when I'm under pressure. 
and uh, you know having that pressure there and we're going 100% uh, and doing something that you know actually works and you know actually works because you know you see it it's back and uh, I think that that's key uh, you need to prioritize what's what's helping you what's not yeah it's key man like and like like you said uh everything you're saying you just got to do and it's under pressure but the only reason you're able to do it under pressure is because you had repetition made yourself work on those drills and you embedded them in your body you have no idea that you're doing them along the way but you are yeah so that's when it happens under pressure is by the practice so uh i see that uh courtney just joined us too uh hey guys and danny well done hi right, danny uh so the idea is if you guys realize this when i'm doing uh, showing the moves especially in the center mid i'm not risking anything i'm putting my body in between the player and the ball right and where the ball is moving is away from the pressure too even in the outside mid moves I'm not trying to not make the guy. I'm not trying to beat him to where he is at, right? I'm keeping the ball away from them. So which makes you more successful and more consistent? And you will be able to do some of those tricks sometimes. And I love doing nutmegs. You guys know me at practices. I love, you know, doing the nutmeg. But there's a time and place for it. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm more consistent. When I was a player, I was very consistent. I was a good player. Uh, but... Like most I lost the ball is when I try to nutmeg people. Those are the, the, the places and timing that I actually lost the ball most. Because, you know, that's risky. Like you just, like, it's, it's so much risk you're taking. Doesn't matter how talented you are, is consistency wise, you need to find a good fight and moment in the game to do something like that. But even then, if you want to make it a high level, just be consistent. Uh, one thing that also I want to add, uh, what Hector said, is the players think they can do this stuff and they work on it on their own and then uh, game time pressure comes and they try something like that and they fall on their butts. Uh, because there's not necessarily a lot of cover, a lot of repetition behind it. Your, your individual training repetition is not like a, a team training under a coach repetition. So that's a very important point too. You know, like what we work on, because if you realize, Hector, when I'm working with you, I'm constantly warning you about where the ball is moving, your technique, not, that, that's not supposed to happen. And I'm constantly telling you, versus when a player does it on their own, they think everything's going perfect. <laughs> Until you see the video of yourself, right? So uh, you can see it there, right? With uh, Like uh, Rio is outstanding center mid, plays for the Steelheads, outstanding, but... Look at how many technical difficulties he had, and then he fixed it. In the next video, bomb, perfect. Right, that's the problem, though. That's that's the player's attitude we need to have. You need to make sure that we have the right players to do the right mentality. Look at Hector's video up there. When we were showing something, Hector in the background, and Rafa does the same thing. They're trying it. Nope. They're listening, and they're trying it off the camera, you know, off the ball. They're trying it on their own. That's the type of players we need. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go to the screen real quick and I'm gonna be waiting for some comments and questions uh, about what we just worked on. Uh, please silence yourselves, guys. So uh, I'm gonna be waiting for some questions, comments. Anybody, coaches, you can put some comments and questions as well. Uh, please do so. While we're waiting for questions, all you players, I want you guys to just realize, notice, like Dodgy actually touched on right at the very end there, both Rio and uh, TJ, two different level players, working hard during the drills, uh, were making adjustments to what they were making mistakes with, and were already starting to improve. So in a matter of only less than 30 minutes, um, with their determination, and focus, they were able to start changing their their technical ability. So, again, don't get discouraged, but keep working at it. So, it's it's these technical sessions we're doing both here on the classroom, right? Uh, and then you guys going out there and trying them. Push yourselves. Go out there and try them. Study them in your head. Get them in your head first. 
get out there and do it. Um, it, it's making a difference. So I know it's tough that we can't be on the field right now. We all want to be out there. Us coaches, we're dying to be out there with you. Uh, we, we miss you guys. Um, but we're doing what we can till we're back as a team out there on the training field. Let's hear some questions, comments, anybody. Yep. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Gilberto, by the way, is coming tomorrow to add some uh, goalkeeper drills. We're going to be sending some goalkeeper drills for Sunday evening, guys. Uh, B is asking, do you have any drills uh, I can do to work on keeping my heel to the ground? Uh, there is a session we did. If you remember, you can uh, watch it again. It's the one that I used the wall to pass it back and forth. Um, and you can, you can go back to that session and see when the pass is coming back, I hit my heel to the ground and constantly uh, you know, work on that technique. I hit my heel to the ground, those two cleats in the uh, in your heel, it needs to be tight, hit the ground really hard when you're hitting the ball. And and you can see in that session, and you can rewind, like go back. I don't remember the subject of that, but Joe can help you find that. And it's definitely going to be a watch, uh, that one. You, you only need a wall to work on it. And you can really perfect that drill. Well, we've we've also got uh, a couple drills that we've gone through videos. Rafa had one uh, what like two weeks ago. Incredible, <clears throat> absolutely incredible with his footwork. And if yeah. you just sit there and watch his passes back and forth to Hector. Yeah, Rafa was on the one touch. Hector was on the two touch back and forth between side to side. Yeah. I mean, if you sit there and look at his footwork, I'm not trying to boost his confidence, but it. It looked good. It looked very good. And if you want to mimic something right there, there it was. We have a lot of videos, a lot of videos that can help. I think that's uh, that video is actually in our Instagram page, guys, if you want to watch it. It's the one that yep. opened the game, first touch. And uh, Rafa has to give him a good first pass back to be able to make the drill better. And Rafa, perfect, hit your heels on the ground every single time, the Beckenbauer style. I agree with Joe, that's a good video to watch for that, but uh, if you want to exercise that to make it perfect, a wall exercise is definitely the one that you got to go to. Hey guys, questions, come on. I have one thing that I'm going to cover uh, because of a question that came in. I will do that right now while I'm waiting for the questions. Alright, so a, a question came from actually a sentiment. Daji, I feel like sometimes defenders are dribbling and they make our, their mind about passing, but there isn't really nothing to do up there. And sometimes we go through the same thing. And, and how do we deal with that, uh, you know, as, as a mindset, right? As a mindset. So right now, uh, this player is coming. He has the ball. Now, a lot of times this happens to players. So... When the player uh, dribbling the ball, he looks and sees one or two players and he made his mind already, but he's not really judging. Okay, oh, this is not going to be anything good. Like if pass the ball to him, he's going to step now. It's going to be a problem for you to deal with. It's going to make you look bad, right? So players need to start thinking smart. So it's okay sometimes you can say to yourself, you know what? I see the pass, but I also see the pressure coming to him. So why not drop the ball back? To the keeper and spread them out again because right now this is the option right here you see they are very compact and this is not there's not really a lot of openings in here right so if you pass the ball it's gonna come back to you so instead cut the ball back and pass the ball to your keeper or cut the ball back dribble a little bit and see if your center back can give you a better option you can pass the center back maybe center back can open the game here and this guy make a run and suddenly pass the ball and we're in attack position, right? But a lot of times, and I know some of you guys thinking, I never do that. Don't lie, because if you didn't ever do that, you'll be playing at uh, Barcelona right now. Like, or anywhere in MLS right now even. Because this is a problem for a lot of you guys. You make up your mind, and I see this in practice from all of you. Literally all of you. You make up your mind to do something and... Nothing can change it at that point, but it should be. Just calculate. Be fast about calculating things. Like, see, okay, this is not going to be good for us. Cut back, 
pass the back to keeper, and he can open the game. Or cut back, wait for the response. Okay, maybe when you cut back, maybe at the outside mid will be able to make it a run. And he says, drop it wide. Okay, now we can get up. But that's a very important thing that we don't necessarily do. And we make up our minds. The same thing can happen in the center mid, right? So center mid is dribbling and he sees this guy making a run. But then we see that maybe a player is making a run here and they covered it. And even though he's making a run, this is not going to be an option anymore. Okay. Uh, you know, like, let's just say they're all here and maybe then, okay, this is not good. He's making a good run, but now they're covering it. So touch it away and pass the ball to this guy. And sometimes using that, uh, like, like Zidane type of players, they use that as an advantage against the other team. They make it look like they're going to pass to this guy on purpose so they can pull more players this way and they pass the ball to the opposite side. That's brilliant. That's next level. And I can tell you, I haven't seen a lot of players in Washington State in the last 22 years I coached. Not many players who can do this more than once in a game. Okay? So it's, this is a really important skill to have. So uh, what I just showed in here, it, it requires a lot of repetition, right? So you need to start trying this stuff, the, the thinking process. So... What I'm trying to tell you guys, yes, this is really hard to do, but introducing you guys to the thinking process of a top-level player is the first step towards becoming one, okay? So it's really important that you guys understand that mentality. This is really, really critical. You know, like, um, I, I'm going to tell you this, guys. I, like, I am really proud of these sessions because I'm telling you, like, if I did this same session today, I did at Galatasaray's youth program, and I'm, I'm hoping one day that's what I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, training the professional youth program in Europe, that's my goal, their response will be very different. And I hope that you guys understand how important it is to listen to these sessions. So the mentality of those guys are going to be like, oh, I can do that, but also I will try it. Oh, next practice, I'm trying this. Like, instead of some of you guys are like, yeah, I heard you. That's it. Like, uh, big difference. Big difference. So, make a difference. Like, just try it constantly. Mental part of the game is everything in this game. I'm telling you, I've seen players who can't juggle the ball, who cannot juggle the ball more than 10 times, that played in my team alongside with me, played in the World Cup team, started for Turkish national team in 2002 World Cup, and they, they finished third place. The semi-finals, they lost to Brazil 1-0, barely game, very close game, and they uh, third place, fourth place game, they won that game, so they won the third place in a World Cup. I'm not going to give a name, but I know a friend of mine there that played in that team that could not juggle the ball more than 10 times. It was horrible at the, on air, to, but he was good because he improved some other stuff and he knew what to do in the right areas and and the skills and your first touch and how many upper V goals you scored or how many nutmegs you do is not necessarily the only thing. Different positions requires different responsibilities and you guys can easily change your position. I've seen some of the center backs become the best forwards. I've seen some of the forwards become the best center backs. Things could change. Open your mind. Even your mommy and daddy says, I want my kid to score goals. That's the only reason I want to be. And that might not be your position to get a scholarship or go to the next level. And once you start seeing that, you can go anywhere you want to go. Okay? Thanks, guys, for tonight. Obviously, there is not more questions. A disappointing interaction. But thank you for the coaches for... Uh, you know, responding with me. I appreciate that. Uh, they're still here. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, like I said... To get a scholarship or go to the next step. Oh, yep, that's me. Uh, uh, anything else you guys want to say before we go? Jeff, let's go with you first. Uh, just stick with it. All the players... We're Gala, we're a family, 
just keep working out there uh, as much as you can on your own. Uh, yeah, you can always make excuses. I'm doing the same thing as a coach, so uh, we're all human. But know that you love soccer. Soccer's a passion of yours. Uh, don't don't let this don't let this time kill that. Keep it up. Uh, Joe, Joe, have pride. That's all I was saying. Uh, have pride. Understand that we're not working for. Uh, we're not a little rec team. Uh, we have coaches who care, players who are supposed to care, uh, captains. Uh, I mean, all the way up through the organization. Uh, know that there's people out there that are trying to work hard, and uh, we want to do it with you guys and for you guys. So push yourselves and uh, just. When we can get back out on the field, I want to see every single one of you raring and ready to go, super excited with energy. That's all I ask. Yeah. Uh, Rafa actually did come for the question, guys. Uh, I'll address it with you if you want to add something to it, too. Uh, what should a uh, player be thinking about when he has the ball and he's about to shoot or dribble before he gets it uh, while he has the ball? So... Uh, Obviously, the first option before you get the ball is, I want to shoot, right? But then you need to put the scenario in your mind, like what the situation gives you. So I, I'm thinking shooting every time I get the ball. I want to shoot right away, right? That's the right mentality. But when you get the ball, if the player is coming at you and you don't have a shot anymore, shooting is, at that point, you're not very next level player, right? You just shoot and it's going to block, it's going to go somewhere. So at that point, you need to be thinking very fast. And to be able to think that fast, you need repetition drills, right? So you need to be able to respond time less and less and less and less by working on it in practice. So the thinking process goes, all right, this is what the other team gives me. I don't have a shot. Or they're giving me my like weak foot. And I did not want a shot with my weak foot, okay? Uh, and then you make the judgment. You start seeing very quickly your other options. Who's open? Okay, who's open? And usually the first place you want to look is not the closest guy when you're in the center of the goal. First place you want to look is the furthest, back post. Because that's going to be the hardest to defend for the other team. So if you can open the game to the opposite side, bomb, that's going to be an easy choice. You looked up, nobody in the back post. Your second option very quickly. Yep, short pass. Give and go situation. That's your last choice. But you might be able to create a chance. I would suggest if the defense is compact, compact do that. But if the defense is not compact, don't get me wrong. Some of you guys are going to think, hey, he's open. I can give a give and go. If he is that open and you only need to beat one defender, yes. Go to the guy in the center. But most of the time, if you don't have a shot, that also means that they're compact. Right? That's when you make the judgment, okay, let me open the game. And then you see the other options. Another option, of course, you can think about taking the guy on. But like I said, it's, it depends on the, what the other gear, team and the situation gives you. And you need to be able to think really quick. But don't make up your mind and stick with it if it's not going to work. Like, I'm going to shoot. And a lot of players do that. I, they shoot no matter what. And like even the top level players like Balotelli. Like I, I know Balotelli missed so many chances because he gets the ball, he wants to shoot. And anywhere, there's a player, he hits him, gives a guy a concussion. He doesn't care, he shot the ball. And Suarez does that too. Suarez gets the ball, boom, shoot. But he doesn't have the angle for it sometimes, right? Like sometimes he scores incredible goals because he tries that. But like if you don't have the shot, you make better judgment of the situation that doesn't mean i don't want you guys to shoot but you need to make sure that you see the shot you see the corner when you're shooting it but most of the time like this is a big point rafa players miss the chance of the shot because they don't think shot first that's why i use the key words when the ball is coming to you shoot first like that's the number one choice because when the ball comes to you and you have a shot, take it right away. But a lot of players do this. They start overthinking before the ball comes. He's like, am I going to have a shot? Am I not going to? And by the time they get the ball and stop the ball to see if they have a shot, defense comes in and now you don't have a shot anymore. 
So to start the positive thinking with, I want to shoot first, is critical. Okay, I hope that's a great question because that opens up a lot of new doors for us to think about. Shoot first. Shooting is the positive thinking. Always try to take shots. I, one of the things that I get mad about is not shooting. But I get disappointed about missing a shot, but I never yell at a player for taking a shot. doesn't matter where they kick it. It's disappointing they missed it, but it's never an anger. I can't believe you missed that shot. I'm going to sub you. No, never going to happen. Because shooting is the most positive thing in this game. Keep it up. Keep it going every time. Are we clear? Thanks, guys.